This video talks about the azoles. What is their mechanism of action? When we use it, what's the toxicities of the azoles? A general overview of what azoles are. Now, azoles are a drug we use for both topical and for systemic infections, for fungal topical and systemic infections. Azoles inhibit the conversion of lenosterol to ergosterol. And ergosterol is a specific, uh, it's the most important component of the cell wall of a fungus. So if they don't have ergosterol naturally, there is not going to be any fungus. We'll so let's talk about the different uh, azoles that we have. So the different azoles that are commonly used are ketoconazole, fluconazole, itraconazole, boriconazole, clotrimazole, and meconazole. I will be talking about fluconazole first. So what exactly is fluconazole and when do we use it? The way I remember it is by the three C's. So what are the three C's? The first C is for it can cross blood-brain barrier. C for can, can cross blood-brain barrier. The next C is that it's used for cryptococcal meningitis in AIDS patient. Okay? And the third C is it causes candida infections. It's used for candida infection. So these are the three C's that are commonly used for fluconazole. What about ketoconazole? Now ketoconazole you can remember by B, C, C, H. B for blastomyces, C for coxoides, C for candida, and H for histoplasmosis. Now these are the, these are the fungus which are often um, which often causes systemic infections. And for systemic infections, we're going to use ketoconazole. Okay? Now, what about clotrimazole and meconazole? Clotrimazole and meconazole are topical fungal infections. So we use it for topical infections such as candida infections or candida vaginitis. We can use clotrimazole or meconazole or any fungal infections which are topical are commonly used by clotrimazole and meconazole. Now these are a general overview. Now what about itraconazole and voriconazole? Itraconazole and voriconazole are often used for aspergillosis. A specific toxicity for fluconazole which is not seen in other sterols is torsades. Okay? And I've already mentioned that clotrimazole and meconazole are used for topical infections. Now let's talk about the toxicities of the azoles. Now we know that azoles are P450 inhibitors. By the way, do you remember all the P450 inhibitors? The mnemonics is right here. It's magic racks. So let's see if we can remember them. M for macrolides, A for amiodarone, G for grapefruit juice, I for isoniazid, C for cimetidine, R for ritonavir, A for acute alcohol abuse, C for cipro or ciprofloxacine, K for ketoconazole. So here is our ketoconazole or the azoles, and S for sulfonamide. Do remember that in acute alcohol abuse, P450 is inhibited, but if you are a chronically using alcohol, then it falls under, um, it's going to be, P450 is going to be induced, okay? So it's opposite if you use it chronic. It's only um, inhibited at, in acute alcohol abuse. Now, so these are the toxicities for all the P450 inhibitors and azoles form right here. Azoles falls right under that category. Now let's talk about, now we can talk about what are the toxicities that are caused by azoles because it is a P450 inhibitor. Now some of the problems associated with P450 inhibition is that it's going to decrease liver metabolism because it's going to decrease the metabolism of P450. 
As a result, you're going to have liver toxicity. So this should not come to you as a surprise. At this, the same reason that it inhibits liver um, toxicity, it's also going to cause gynecomastia. And can you think of why? Why do we have gynecomastia when we have P450 inhibitor, inhibition? That's because um, all the drugs and all the hormones that should be metabolized by the liver is not happening. As a result, they're staying in the system for a longer amount of time than they should. So in this case, testosterone, which should have been broken down much earlier, kind of keeps staying in our system, which gets convert, converted to estrogen with the help of the enzyme aromatase. Okay? This increases the level of estrogen, which is going to cause gynecomastia. So here, gynecomastia is caused because of decreased inhibition. All right? Other associated symptoms are going to be fever and chills, which are also going to be seen in um, azole toxicity in general. But what is one of the specific toxicities of fluconazole? It's going to cause torsos. So there you go. That is my interpretation of the azoles.